Good morning. You're welcome to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. My name is Romet Paulson. And my name is Nyamgo Agaji. Welcome to the 11th day of June 2024. Mm. We're in June already. Yes. It's, it promises halfway. to be a wonderful day. Yeah. yeah. Halfway into the year and tomorrow is Democracy Day, June 12th. Mm -hmm. Democracy Day. I, I wonder if there's going to be a public holiday or it's just there going to be... There should be a public uh, holiday. Well, we have barely had the pronouncement. We don't know whether our democracy day gone will also be pronounced. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know until it is pronounced. We will still hope that tomorrow will come. We will okay. celebrate it no matter yeah. what it is, whether it's going to be in our offices or in our houses, mm -hmm. whatever it is. And it's 25 years. You know how they say 25 years is like a milestone? Mm -hmm. That's supposed to be like a silver jubilee, mm -hmm. right? So 25 years of democracy since 1999 when we decided to go into... Um, a civilian rule mm. and have like a democratic government. Yeah, I don't know whether the 25 years is to celebrate just getting to 25 or their achievements that we are going to be yeah. uh, uh, celebrating getting to 25 years because you know uh, slave trade <laughs> happened. There was a 25 years, there was a 50 years, there was a 100 years. It was a uh, so it was negative. Yeah. I don't know whether our 25 years as a democratic nation yeah. or uninterrupted democracy in 25 years, whether it's something to be really thankful to God for or not. Well, but whatever it is, we'll mm -hmm. thank God for small mercies, I Definitely. think. Definitely. And we'll find out a lot more about that yeah. because we have like a special package for you tomorrow for Democracy Day. Mm. But let's stick to today. Mm -hmm. Let's have what the breakfast is saying this morning. And this morning, we'll be looking at several hot topics, one of which reps stick six-year tenure for president rotation among zones. Another says court dismisses suits seeking to declare 25 rivers assembly seats vacant. We'll also be taking global stories, making headlines in our national dailies, as well as some top trending stories. But first, let's check out our quote of the day. which have had the most profound effect on human life are usually simple. And that is by Freeman Dyson. Uh, he was an, uh, a British American uh, mathematician and physicist. And this morning he has said, the technologies which have had the most profound effect on human life are usually simple. So it's not that complicated. Mm -hmm. It's usually the simple things. Yeah, I've always said that uh, one of the greatest inventions was a, a much stick. Mm. As simple as that was, but it, it revolutionized a lot of things in our world. A mm -hmm. matchstick, a simple a kitchen knife, a simple this and that. Those mm -hmm. are the things. Not not a nuclear bomb, mm -hmm. not going to mm -hmm. the moon, not nothing of that nature. The mm -hmm. simple things are the ones that matter the most. Mm -hmm. And it also is the same thing with everything in life. Yeah. Those things that matter the most are usually free or mm -hmm. simple. Yeah. And that, that's how it is. Yeah. I know... Um, well, as of today, we would say our devices are simple, but in times past, maybe in like 50, 100 years before now, it would have seemed really, really complicated. So I think simple can be quite relative. Um, with our mobile devices now, it's very simple. You can easily connect to, with someone. Um, now we have FaceTime or we have video calls. So something that seemed very, um, very far off, that you can't not really connect now today you're able to do that and technology is one and two together binary numbers saying you know what i want to have that in that innovation something that would just change the world for better so obviously nuclear bombs i don't think <laughs> they change the world for better because you're <laughs> killing people at the end of the day and war is never good but something as simple as a mobile device where you get to connect with your loved ones is simple and you know that's that has had the utmost impact in our lives, mm -hmm. especially today, because that's something I can say, yes, this is something th that has had impact in my life, in the lives of the people that I know, because it's easier for me to connect with them. Unlike maybe years ago, where you have to write letters. <coughs> but especially, it takes a long especially, time to especially it takes a generation to define what simple is. Yes. Yeah, like you said, a few years ago, a mobile phone would have been a really complicated mm -hmm, thing. Mm -hmm. People wouldn't have been, in my community, a funny story, my community, my nation, let me call it that way, uh, there's a man who is known as the greatest liar. Greatest okay. liar. I'm funny, following. The, funny, the funny thing is that he was conscripted into the army. He was taken overseas, and when he came back, people couldn't believe he mingled with the whites. And they asked him, what is that thing that you saw there that we don't have here? And he said they, they could fly. 
in the air. And they felt that was the greatest lie. So mm. any time anybody told a lie, they would call that man's name like, oh, okay, wow. you're like this person. Oh, wow. So he became the greatest liar because for them, it was impossible, impossible for somebody to fly. Mm. So, but today we're seeing airplanes everywhere. Everyone and, is entering. <laughs> everyone, into everyone is entering yeah. in the daytime, I might add, mm -hmm. because uh, mm -hmm. the African technology will yeah, have to fly in the night. night. <laughs> so, in the daytime. So <clears throat> it depends on the generation to define what really is mm -hmm. For us today, uh, mobile phones are simple, mm -hmm. but it wouldn't have been 200 years ago. You, yes. would, you would be burnt at stake. Uh, for how we're reading a device that you can talk to someone else. They like call you a witch. witch. Yeah. Probably you burn your life. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, well, <clears throat> but the general thing, like the quote said, the simple things are most times the most important things in mm -hmm. our life. So mm -hmm. we should take note of the detail. Yeah. We should take note of the small things. We should mm -hmm. take note of simple things. And our life will be a lot better. Yeah, I agree. All right, let's move over to some top trending stories. This one talks about labor. Well, labor rolls out strike on Tuesday awaits Tinubu's nod. The NLC president, Joe Ajero, announced this during the International Labor Conference in Geneva, Switzerland. Ajero noted that the figures proposed by the Tripartite Committee are currently with President Bola Tinubu. The government and employers proposed a minimum wage of 62,000 naira, while labor proposed 250,000 naira. Ajero clarified that the submission of, of 62,000 naira does not mean Labour has accepted it as the new minimum wage. The NLC is waiting for the President's decision and will deliberate on the new figure once it is released. Ajero criticized state governors for rejecting the 62,000 naira minimum wage proposal, urging them to decentralize their salaries and emulate governors like Edo's Godwin Obaseki, who pays a 70,000 naira minimum wage. Exactly what we've said. Because we're mm. like, how, how would the federal government say 62 and one state is saying 70? I would expect that you would even surpass, you know. We were, we were saying it on this show, like, yeah. what if it is 60,500 60, or 60,100? I never expected <clears throat> 60. I mean, I said that as a joke, but I never expected 62,000. And, and then, we're and then someone, someone said something that really cracked me up. He said, uh, the real amount is 60,000. They now added 2,000 for POS charges. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's so funny, but at the same time, it's really disheartening. And we've been saying it on this show. I wonder why they are not putting, bringing to the table the argument that, okay, these things, X, Y, Z, that's making things so hard, we are mm. going to do this or yeah. that. They're not talking about transportation, they're not talking about education, because they're not talking about health. Transportation even takes All these things time. that people are complaining, they're not talking about, they're to, just talking about money. 60,000 at the How end of the day. How many people in Nigeria How have HMOs? I wonder. A good question. How many people have that? How many people can afford What about healthcare? insurance? Yeah. Even, okay, now something happened. Heritage Bank has been mm -hmm. liquidated. And then people who have, even have more than a million, uh, more than five, on, five million naira are not sure they're going to have their money because the insured capital is five million. Anything above that, they said they will have to sell assets. They will do this and that. That's a long Thank story. Yeah. You might not have your money back. Mm -hmm. So even insurance is a problem. Health is a problem. Education, education is a problem, transportation is a problem, and then the pata pata of them all, like, <laughs> like the comedian would say, is food. Yeah. You can't even feed yourself. I went to the market over the weekend and I was shocked. I was shocked that a, a little paint bucket, you know those very small mm -hmm. paint bucket of tomatoes, is going as high as 8,000 naira. Mm. Before you buy pepper, before you buy rice, uh, that's pepper that count for you like four, four yeah, six for, for five hundred yeah. exactly mm -hmm. about four of them for five hundred. Like four scotch bonnet is five hundred naira. The um, little paint bucket of beans when I was doing like my market moving around was nine thousand naira. So I'm like, how are people so like? I really want, and I had to ask my domestic staff yesterday. I said, how are you coping? You have kids. Kids don't know anything like mm -mm. there's no money. Mm -mm. It's mommy, I'm hungry. Daddy, I'm hungry. You're working. You need to provide regardless. So how are you coping, especially with food that is the most basic thing? Because mm. you need food to yeah. live. So you must buy these foods. And I'm like, how are you doing it whereby your income it's not really increased. There's no more. There's no money coming in. Yeah, but every day you go to the market, <laughs> there is an addition to the price that you knew yesterday. Yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> what are we doing to even 
you know, help with food security, food supply. Because you know that that's the main thing. Food, transportation, shelter, those are the main things that the government are, are supposed to be looking into and say, how can we subsidize this? Mm -hmm. I know that they came and said they were selling a bag of rice for how much a few months ago. But what impact? And that's the thing. You cannot just... People started dying to get measures. that thing and yeah. then you they stopped have, it. You can't have stop gap, stop gap measures and say, you know what, we're going to do this. So what happens after then? What is your long-term plan? If you're really looking at food security in Nigeria, they should be, you know what, we're helping farmers you know um for um what do they call having to import mm. i know they've said the import duties they're going to suspend that for food and all of that for six months for six months so what happens after then are you looking at the long-term plan to say okay we know that we've messed up as a as a government they will never say we that. know that we've messed up this is where we are but how do we um salvage what we have to say that in the next two years this is our plan so whatever you're going through now We've told you to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. We've told you to tighten up your belt. But there is a time limit to this. Don't worry. You're only sacrificing for the next two years. Let's see what we can do. How we can galvanize ourselves together and make Nigeria better. And we know that in two years' time, it will be flourishing and everyone will be better. Everybody, everyone will be happy for it. But no, they will give you 25,000 naira, 75,000 naira palliative. Then what happens after then? Because guess what? I will still go to the market. The 75,000 naira will be done in a few minutes. And I'm back to status quo. I'm back to, back to ground zero. So I think the government really needs to... <laughs> Nigeria. I'm just looking at you. I'm like, oh, okay, go ahead, Rumer. Go, Rumer. Go, Rumer. Keep talking. Mm. But, you know, it's, it's a terrible thing. Yeah. At the end of the day, even 200,000 will not be enough. So there need to be something that will be... 200,000? How much is a bag of rice? Okay, you see that. There's some, there there needs to be something that can be done to make sure that, like you said, a long-term plan. Yeah. But our governments don't have long-term plans. They have short-term plans that will finish in four years or three years. Do you know the kind of cars that governors are buying for, for their executive, federal, uh, for their state executive members? Expensive cars in a state where people cannot be cannot even receive their salaries mm. of the 30,000. You're buying expensive cars for your executive council, buying for the legislature so that they can make laws that will favor you as mm. a governor and all that. Do you know what amount we read the other day, how governors have spent on something as, as mundane as entertainment for mm. guests that may not even be Sitting official allowance. and all that. So it's a terrible thing we're going through. On the one hand, people are enjoying uh, our collective sweat. And on the other hand, the people who are really sweating, sweating. to make sure that's, that this money suffering. gets to our coffers are not even seeing what to, to eat. It's a very terrible thing. And then the governors will come and say, we cannot afford this. And I like what Joe Ajara said. I mean, cut, cut your costs, cut your expenses. If I had a business and I'm not doing well, I would look for a way to maybe downsize one. But we're not saying downsize and people should lose their jobs. But cutting costs. Maybe we can say this electricity is really expensive. Let's start to manage electricity better. So if we had five ACs, we have to know that we need to manage about three. You know, having to say, okay, we need to move here, logistics, let's plan our day so that we know that we move here, we move there, we're back, we're saving costs of, 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 for, for fuel. So you cannot tell me that, I, I, no, I don't have the money. Instead, the uh, secretary to the federal government said he cannot, will, will come, come and say he cannot pay 100000 for four drivers. For four drivers. In the first place, you have four drivers which you may not need, but in, how can you in, at your status say that you cannot pay? Which means he's not paying them up to 100,000. Mm -hmm. And the first target, in a high profile person like that, if you're a driver, you're the first target in case anything yeah. happens. Yeah. Because you are the one who will escape with him, so you will be gone down first. Mm -hmm. So he's not so even thinking of, you're your risking your life for, for less than 100,000 naira. And then you have four of them. You cannot pay them a hundred thousand naira. It's insulting. Just to make sure that he's arguing, he, mm -hmm. he has a point of argument. Mm -hmm. You're telling me that four drivers you can't maintain them at one hundred thousand a month. 
How much are you? Then cut and these people are even being paid. It. They are even being paid by the government. If you cannot even afford it, cut it down. That's what I'm saying to the state governors. <sighs> if you know that you cannot afford this, then cut it down. Simple. My some of my people will say, "Bob, Bob, leave that one." <laughs> <laughs> the Kaba people will say that. Okay, Russia reportedly sends Nigerians and others to war over passport renewal. Is another thing, and it's so disturbing. Russia is reportedly forcing thousands of migrants and foreign students, including Nigerians, to fight in the uh, Ukrainian war, just in a bid to make them uh, uh, renew their passports uh, at, at any time. That, and I'm, I was just asking myself when I saw this story, where, what are we, why did we get here? Mm. That foreign passports would be so, so important for us that we have to go to war to mm -hmm. be able to get to it. Get it. These are people who, some of them are in school, and they cannot finish if they don't renew their passports, they need it. These are some people who are doing business, some people are just living there and all that, and they need these passports, and they're sending them to war. So I should go and die. I should go and die. And a lot of them are doing it. And uh, what are we doing as a country that will make our people risk their lives to even fight a war to be able to get a passport of another country, which if we look inwards and build our country well, we'll not even measure up to Nigeria. Mm. It really, really disturbed me when I saw that story. I don't know. Because, they've made Nigeria in such a way that you cannot even appreciate what you have. You know that you have all of these natural resources. You know you have the best people in the world, the most resilient people, the happiest people in the world. Um, we have such a great nation. But then every single day, it's as if the government just tries to disappoint you mm -hmm. and make you think where you are is not good enough. And so you have to go somewhere else where the grass is greener. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily because the grass is actually greener, but the grass is greener on your side. The people, I mean, people are people, running to Sudan, they're running to, the people to people Libya, they're, they're running... You feel like I you know. are being strifled, like the grass is just not... You're not even seeing it being lush. And so now I have to go to a country like Russia and I have to go to war and probably die in the process. Some people might come out and say, yes, I have the passport. But others might die in the process mm -hmm. just because your own leaders have failed you. So I wonder what, you know, the government is doing, how they sit in their homes and... They know these things are happening and they're fine with it. Honestly, if we all decide today, come together as a nation and say we want to make Nigeria better, we can. Yeah, because yeah. we have everything it takes. We have the resources. We have the brains. Do you know how smart Nigerians are? We have everything to put this country in order. But greed would not allow some people to make Nigeria better. People see it as a poverty elevation scheme to be able to go to certain places of power and My say, I want to get it for myself. Mm -hmm. So I think at the end of the day, if you're patriotic enough and you really love your country, you would say, I want to do better. And I keep saying this. Right now, you, you think Nigeria is like this. How about in the next 50 years? If we go this same hill, imagine what will happen in the next 50 to 100 years. And it's your kids your generations to come that would inherit this land so what are you doing yeah we'll get to that point where maybe i'll be buried in one place and all my children will not even know my grave mm. because they will be in a foreign country. country they just want to and how can i blame them i cannot blame them because it's really 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 terrible being a Nigeria, Nigerian right now. I love this country with passion. I, I, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. If I have to go overseas, let me go uh, for holidays, let me go and for studies, back. let me go for something else and come back to Nigeria. But day by day, like you said, the people who are supposed to make life easy for us are the people who are making us really, really sad that we are Nigerians. Hmm. Things that should come naturally are things that they, they, they pride themselves on and, and they call them uh, the evidence of democracy. You do a road for me, it's not the evidence of democracy. Let my voice be heard. Mm -hmm. If my voice is heard, that is democracy because yeah. I have a voice. It is my government. I tell you what I want mm -hmm. and you do it for me. You don't... You don't, you don't come and, and, you know, just... I'm, I'm open for cut tips in America and say we have done a road or we have done a bridge or we've built a, or, a city or, or we've or done a well, a well. <laughs> last, week, last week a well was commissioned as a constituency project by a senator a well i can't do like well that they dug <laughs> <laughs> oh god I can't please 
let's get the next trend, top trending. Well, the next top trending story, um, this one talks about, well, let's see that. One minute. So our next top trending story is about EFCC, in fact, Ondo State. So e the Ondo State chapter of the Lounge and Club Owners Association have urged the state and federal government to investigate a raid by Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, operatives in a nine club and hotel in Akure. The EFCC reportedly arrested about 127 youths suspected of being internet fraudsters during the early morning raid on Saturday, June 8, 2024. The EFCC stated that the raid was based on credible intelligence, indicating that the party initially scheduled for June 5 was postponed to evade security and intelligence networks. Mr. Bayomi Ajekwe, the association chairman, described the EFCC's approach as commando-like and likened it to an armed robbery, claiming that the property worth millions of naira was vandalized. Ajakpe noted that the raid embarrassed many guests, including a new couple, and has negatively, negatively impacted the hospitality business in the state. He expressed concerns about the incident and called for the government to intervene, stating that the association is consulting with lawyers on possible legal actions. Mr. Ayo Abbas Akinwade, manager of Signature's um, hotels detailed the aggressive nature of the raid, which included EFCC operatives arriving in unmarked Toyota buses, using snooker sticks to beat patrons, and releasing tear gas. He mentioned that the CCTV system was dismantled and taken away by the operatives, and some customers needed first aid due to medical emergencies caused by the raid. The chairman and CEO of the hotel confirmed the extensive damage to his property and noted that no prior issues or invitations were received from the EFCC before the raid. I saw this on social media and I saw pictures of people being beaten. Mm -hmm. I saw marks on their bodies. I saw, I think some of them were even stripped as well. And I was just like, how, why? And then they said. I mean, if you want to arrest someone, they said arrest that them it was dignity. taken out of context. You know, it mm. was doctored. They, they, in fact, they, they termed it a Yahoo party. Uh, so they said the video was doctored. That's EFCC mm. doctor. That's not what really happened, and all that, and all that. But hey, this is what we see, like almost on daily basis. Mm -hmm. And then the people who need to be arrested like this are walking scot-free. Mm -hmm. If you own a laptop, it's a problem in Nigeria. You have dreadlock, it's a problem in Just Nigeria. Just go on the road and, and look like that. Know, they yesterday, will stop you. Yesterday, someone told me a very, a very funny story uh, that someone, uh, some children were missing and then they, someone got to see them at a, a particular shop and raised the lamb. And when the parents of these people came to get their children, that person at that shop said, Another man brought the children and dropped them and collected bags of rice as, and kept them as collateral that he was coming back to pay and what? kept those children. So when the police were alerted, instead of the police recovering these children, or even for me, I think that shop owner is a suspect as yeah. well, they now said, eh, the police is now arresting people who don't take care of their children well. Okay. So that's how the case died. So the mother of these children had to go and pay for the bags of rice that a supposed man had taken wow. and left the children as ransom. Wow. What kind of judgment is that? Yeah. So, so you're not even doing the so job. So the police is not even doing the job they're supposed to yeah. do. They're just basing some things on assumptions, basing some things on frivolous things and that don't really matter. Arresting people, arresting people and just calling them. Boys and, and girls. If you check if there were 30 people, if there would be a criminal, maybe two or three of them, yeah. the rest of them are just arrested like that. Because I heard they raided the entire hotel, arrested, paraded everyone from there. How do you go? So you don't even know who you're looking for. What kind of intelligence There's do no you have? There's no target they have, nothing. You just go there and, and this, arrest everybody. This, this hotel has a lot of people. a new couple. Yeah. So, so imagine having your honeymoon and mm -hmm. just get arrested. <laughs> You've been stung by a bee. <laughs> Nigeria can happen to you. It's terrible. Oh, my goodness. All right, we'll go on a short break. We'll look at the weather, and when we return, we'll be reviewing the papers. Please stay with us. Mm.